Hey yo, thanks for tuning in to Celeb Source, your source for celeb news. Now today we have, yeah, we got absolute insanity over here, man. And you know it doesn't stop. But I mean, like what you want, you know what I'm saying? We got uh, Victor Webinyama talking about um, uh, American women and what they are like. Okay. We also got um, a Dame Dash on on hip hop with a suspicious plan. You know what I'm saying? A suspicious plan to against black people. I almost agree with him though. I, not almost. I do agree with him. Uh, BG, uh, BG's reunion tour. We also got Rick Ross not letting up on um, uh, your boy, uh, <laughs> and, and coming for Birdman at that. We got Casa not um, part two of uh, the whole shenanigans with the with, with the with the girl Layla Red. Um, we also got uh, Kesha on Diddy, and we also got uh, a bad boy artist being released from prison and what his desires are. Yeah, that's right. He want to link up with Diddy. Again, thanks for tuning in to Celeb Source. Yo, if this is your first time to the channel, man, be sure to hit that like button and feel any part of the content. We definitely appreci appreciate that. I The notification bell's waiting for your tap, man. Go on and give it a tap, and that subscribe button's waiting for your subscription, man. So go on and touch that to you. Check this out, man. Uh, Victor Web... 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 How do I say his name? Web... Web... Um, Victor Web and Yama. Okay, this man, this man, I'm about to, I'm about to trigger you, ladies. You ready? If you're an American lady, ooh, you're about to be triggered. Just, just go on and, and go ahead of this. You don't want to hear this part. He got to say something about American women. Okay. All right. So now that my fellas is here, okay, um, <laughs> he's talking about your wives. He's talking about your wives. He's talking about your auntie. He's talking about your mama. <laughs> he's talking about your sister. Victor Webimyama said, "I can't date American women. They're too masculine." Paris women are soft and tender. American women remind me of NBA young boy. <laughs> Yo, man, tell me. Look, look, I know that American women right now, like, who the cuff is you talk? Who are you calling an inch? <laughs> and then they, 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 they're uniting together. You and I, t you know what I'm saying? Who are you calling the itch? Yo, man, um, uh, this man said, look, look, I went straight to the comments. First off, I looked at the vote, right? You like, what did you vote on that? Never mind what I voted. I looked at the vote. The vote said, do you agree with him? Is he speaking facts? 86% of the people on College Kids web uh, 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 Insta, 86% said American women are too masculine. They agreed with him. And 14% 14, 14 said no. Okay? Let me re remove my vote. Okay. Look, look, listen, man. Somebody, I look, I went in a comment. Somebody said, wait till he meet a NYC joint, a New York City joint. <laughs> in other words, um, Sandman is saying the New York City women are super masculine. Uh, yeah, I swear there was an agenda to make the men in America feminine and the women in America masculine. I swear there is an agenda to do that. Why the hell would people want to do that? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But last I checked. I know that there was a whole other government that was trying to influence an election, so I wouldn't be surprised if they was making folks have identity crisis over here. And you know we have identity crisis because what's the big issue over here? Identity, right? What kind of identity? They, these people, let me, let me not even go there. Uh, SB Finesse said, young boy gonna take this ish to heart. <laughs> Another person, Soheem Perry, said, this is coming from a black Frenchman. I am actually very glad that he spoke up because perspectives like this is the only thing that will help bring this overly entitled black American, uh, uh, this overly entitled black American women back down to earth. Why are you coming for the black American when he ain't said black women? Did he say black women? He didn't say black women. He said women. Let me see. American women. This dude said black women. Okay. Uh... I mean, unbelievable. Soheem Perry. He said overly entitled black American women back down to earth. They need to be put in their places. Man, go sit down somewhere. Um, sorry, been taking care of myself from household and personal trauma. I can't be soft until I feel safe. Oh, okay. This is what Anika said. Sorry, I've been taking care of myself from household and personal trauma. I can't be soft until I feel safe. Interesting point. Um, there's actually no way people actually believe Webb said this ish, even if it might be true. Um, I right, look, look, look. Somebody said that was a fake page, GNG. Okay, I hope it was a fake page because that's a crazy statement for him to say. But let me, let me, let me just throw this out here though, man. You know what I'm saying? Because whether that's real or not, the the fact that it, let's say it's not real, let's say he didn't say that, right? The vote said that 86 percent of the people agreed with this fake comment that was stated which already is an issue. That means 86% of the people that read that believe that. Are women in America masculine? Let me tell you something, man. 
That's a, that would be a sad state of affairs. Now, what that person said, somebody said something very important, which I thought to be very impressive. She said, um, been, I've been taking care of myself from household and personal trauma. I can't be soft until I feel safe. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, I could see I could see how a woman can feel that way. And, and the crazy thing is. Um, there is a system in place that incentivizes, I guess that's my word for the week, that incentivizes women being single. And how do they incentivize that? Huge child support checks and huge, um, uh, huge child support checks, huge um, spousal support type situations. Like anything to say you don't really need to have a man with you. OK, you can do this for yourself, independent woman and you know, I think Jill Scott put it so perfectly. She said, I could kill the spider above my head. I could do it, but it's hard because I'm scared. You see what I'm saying? So women can do what men do, but a lot of times they may not want to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just what it is. And a lot of men can do what women do, but sometimes we just don't feel inclined to do those things. So I think we're working against a system and media that's trying to confuse the identities of the sexes. There are certain gender specific, I guess, tasks and roles, maybe. And there are there are. Um, and that's just what it is. And I mean, it's been like that for ages. But folks now over here want to want to be gender fluid. And this is where we get. OK, um, look, all my fellas that love <laughs> uh, all, all my fellas that love feminine women, you go on and hit the like button. OK, and all of y'all that love masculine women, just sit there. Uh, let's get to the next story. Yeah, I think I think I done triggered enough people. Listen, <laughs> look, all the masculine women, like, who the f flipping over tables and stuff like that, punching their husbands. Listen, man. Uh, and look, and let, let me throw one more thing out here about that. You're like, oh gosh, here we go. Yo, man, you got, you can go somewhere else. You don't need to stay here. We ain't begging you. Listen, okay. I, I want to throw this out here. All right. Um. Uh. I think that. A lot of men have been, unfortunately, our culture is designed where you have a lot of men that are raised by their moms, okay? And as a result, a lot of men that are raised by their moms view things from through the perspective and the lens of a woman or their mom. And that's not, there's nothing, I mean, a woman can have her perspective, but when a man is looking at things through a woman's perspective in terms of how to deal with issues, not like a man, but like a woman, it looks kind of strange. I personally think this is why you have a lot of men that that um, that how can I say this that kind of act like they kind of act like women in terms of how they deal with situations. A lot of men know, hey, look, man, if I if I take this to the next level, the whole bridge is going to get burnt, man, I'm, and I'm not going to do that. A lot of men, you know what I'm saying? A lot, a lot of us know how not to do that. And uh, women, will, men, women will torch the whole the whole house to kill the roach you see you see what i'm saying we get the slipper women burn the house down um maybe i'm wrong tell me if i'm wrong i might be wrong it's, it's possible and i'm cool with that okay uh where we at over here i just heard i just heard a beat i know it's in here somewhere all right look listen um here's the thing man most of the fights where i work most of the fights that happen are fights from the young ladies you follow what i'm saying from it's the young ladies that get into fights way 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 more than the guys let's throw that out there anyway my bad um I, look i just had this next conversation dame dash has just expressed that hip-hop is a psychological operation designed to persuade control and influence the masses dame dash was on the pbd podcast where he made the following statement about uh, this psychological warfare that's taking place. I want you to take a listen to this real quick. Sneakers to have my own, all that shit is amazing. Yeah. To me, I'm not worried about that bubblegum shit. That's why I left it. You understand what I mean? But I'm not going to be grouped up, never. And the feds don't need to call me because if they watching or listening, they're like, yo, this motherfucker just living a nice, pleasant, boring life. The only lawsuit you're going to get from me is I yelled at you. That's it. You're not going to get none of that old funny shit because that's not what I do. You're not. There is no gray area with Dame Dash. And the receipts are there. Period. I tape everything. So yeah, <laughs> that was great. Um, by the way, why do you think uh, crime is so high in Chicago? Because it's so, such a big state. You think because it's a big state? Yeah, it's like sixteen. You see, 
There's plenty of big states, but why is Chicago so crime? Go, go Google it. It's the reason why they say the crime rate is what's relative to how many people are there. So, so many people get killed because so many people are in one spot. You understand what I'm saying? It's just a big spot. That's why it is. But I would say the reason why is because the government enables the kids. They're not doing anything to stop it. It's happening worldwide. They're getting kids used to going to jail. So you think what happens bad I, policies? I just think that if you put a kid yeah. in a situation where he has enemies mm -hmm. and then take him away to go to jail and come back and put him back in the same situation, mm -hmm. he's going back to jail. I think if you don't educate a child and you disenfranchise his family, uh, you're going to jail. Rob, could you pull up the clip? Could you pull up the clip by Ice Cube? I'm curious. And I still have uh, one last question within that context that I go back to, but I want to play this clip for you. Here's Cube with Bill Maher. Okay. And, and I kind of want you to hear this and tell me if you agree with him. Go for it. Okay. Let's take, let's take rap music. Let's take okay. the same people who own the labels on the prisons. True. So literally the same people, literally the same people who own the labels on private prisons. So, so, you know, it, it seems really kind of suspicious, if you want to say that word, that- It seems obvious. You know, the records that come out are really geared to push people towards that prison industry. But they didn't make you write those lyrics. It's not about making, it's not about making somebody write the lyrics. It's about um, being there as guardrails to make sure certain songs make it through and certain songs don't. Certain flavors are exposed on the record. You know, some records are made by committee. You meaning record company guys sit around and tell the artists, this is hot, say that, do this. We're gonna have this guy write the lyrics. We're gonna have that. So the the narrative is really kind of, you know, structured and 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 and, and really made into what the record company want the record to be. And what the, you know, a lot of artists are frustrated with this kind of music making. You know, a lot of people, you know, feel like they're being controlled by the label. This is how they do it. What are your thoughts on what he's saying here? It's obvious. Um, you never told me if a boss is a good boss if his whole crew goes to jail. Not Trump, just in general. If a whole if a boss if his whole crew goes to jail, yeah. you're random off. Right. If his whole crew goes to jail, is he a good boss? You ever been to jail? Can you answer my question? I don't judge it that way. I'm asking you a question. I wouldn't judge it that way. Okay. So you don't judge a yeah, good boss by the how good his family was? Well, you let me ask, let me ask you a different boss? question. Maybe, but I'm asking you a question. How about I ask you a different question? Here's a question but for I'm you. I'm asking you a question. How do you judge a boss if 47 people around them get killed? I didn't ask you killed? that. I didn't ask you that. Oh, it depends. If it depends on if it, if, if, if it was 4,000 people and only 47 got killed, then I'll say that's not the bad a bad odd. Got but it. If, so if, then it depends would be the answer, right? I asked right? if his whole crew goes to jail. Yeah. Is he a good boss? I thought you were trying to unify. Now you're trashing a president. I'm not, I mean, what why, kind of unifier are you? Saying, are you? What not, happened? Wait, 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 wait. Choose a position. No, don't. You can't tell me what to do. tell me. It, listen, listen. You're not listening. Yeah. I'm not saying that about Trump. I'm saying that in general. Yeah. Forget Trump. If you're a boss, and your man right there, and everyone that's in here goes to jail but you, are you a good boss? So was Sugar good boss? You're not going to answer my question, huh? Because it depends. It's the same I, I answer would, you I, gave. I'm not, I'm not talking about another man. I would tell you it depends. Okay. So it's a... it's a, it's a it, it In what way could your whole crew go to jail and you're a good boss? But in what way can 47 associates close to you get killed? What does that have to do with what I'm talking about? I'm asking about? a question from you. But you're not answering mine. Decide. You're not answering mine. Because I'm giving you the same answer you're giving. You're not, I didn't give you... Wait, I'm asking you a question. No, you, I'm asking... You, all you I said, said it was, depends. I didn't say it depends. I you said did. if a boss yeah. goes... If his whole crew goes to jail and he does not, yeah. is he a good boss? I'm not talking about Trump. You are talking about No, Trump. I'm not. You know how many motherfuckers I know whose whole crew went to jail? Yeah. You're just, that's just a shoe fits wearing. I don't have no people to listen. You're, you're, let, me get, let, me get, let me get it clear. Tell me. I'm not in here to be Trump bashing or Biden bashing or any of that. I'm just asking you a question of logic, not about politics. Dame, do you think racism exists? So you're not going to answer my question. But I gave it to you. I said it depends. Do that's think, not an answer. You know that. Do you think racism exists? Of course it does. It does. Yeah. I'm racist as fuck. <laughs> so funny about that. 
Yeah, you said you're racist yourself. Yeah. Why? Why are you? I'm against bitch ass niggas. Okay. So, but is that skin color? Or could that be white, uh, black, so Asian, anything? White, black, Asian, anything. anything. Okay. So let me specify. I'm, do you think racism towards a skin color or nationality yeah, ethnicity there's, exists? There's definitely things that I assume yeah. because of color. If you want to call that racism, yeah, just because of natural experience. And so what do you think about when you see a white guy executive of a major label? What do you think about? Of a major label, like music label. Let's just say. Let me finish. Yeah. A major, a major black label. If a white guy's running a black label, that's that's problematic for me. If a white guy's running a black label. Yeah. How about a black guy running a white label? It doesn't happen, but it doesn't matter. I think there's no such thing as a white label. That's what's funny, right? When you go into music, it's yeah. black music, but there's no white music. They don't have a white music division. It's just a black music division. Why is that? Is that racist? So, so I'm asking you, is that can racist? You be, I'm not in the space, so I don't know. So be specific. Like, who has so a black... It, uh, every every music... Do they say black or do they say hip-hop? Because Eminem say, is white and he's sold bro, more records. I'm not sugarcoating shit. shit. Yeah. I said it's called black music. Head of black music. I'm not black and I listen to hip-hop. It's not what I... You're not answering any of my questions, bro. Yeah, I said is it racist? Invite me on your podcast. I'll answer. I will. Questions. All right, yeah. come on. Yeah, come, come, come to America, new. You no, you owe me that. That's, I'm that, with you. That's my thing. I'm if, game. If, if, I'm with you. Right. I'm with you. What I'm saying yeah. is, there is a black music division in every label. There is. Okay. And there isn't a white music division in every label. Okay. So I'm asking you, is that racist? But you're not going to answer. It's going to depend. I know. No, no, I, I, I don't know the facts. Too. I gave you the facts. You do know the facts. Too. No, no, I don't. Know. I'm telling I'm not, you the facts. Yeah. That's why are you doing I, this? I would say a. You, how a, much? What's your net worth? A hip hop. What's your net worth? What's your net worth? I got a couple dollars. Here. So you asked. Dodging the hell out them questions from Dame. He was dodging the hell out them questions. It was disgusting. Okay. Uh, shout out to Dame Dash though, man. You know what I'm saying? Look, the man is on point. This is a scary world we living in, man. Listen, how is it right that making music about murder in the black community? is incentivized with millions of dollars in popularity and the music is not about killing terrorists or racist murderers and stuff like that. Yes, hey, it's not about killing b bad people or anything like that. At least I could understand if it was about killing harmful people. The music is about murdering the black dude standing right over there, just looking at you. Yes, hey, yes, hey. that's crazy to me. <laughs> look, 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 the guy just looked at you and the music is like, hey, yeah, yeah, we're gonna, we gonna murder him. Yes, sir. Hey. Um, and then, <laughs> and then what Cube said, the people that own the labels invest in the prisons and through the label, they invest in murder music, which results in drill songs being made and they making money. And then they go to prison. I mean, this whole situation is set up. It's set up. It's set up against folks. I, I was just asking folks today, like, how come how come we don't hear this? Kill the kill the other dude like from any other culture. Is it only our culture? Is black culture stupid? I need y'all to answer that. If we are making songs about just murdering each other, neutralizing each other, coming up with different forms of neutralization, almost genocide against ourselves, are we stupid? <laughs> I need you to answer that in the comments below. I feel like we might could be stupid, bro. Now, if you are if you are real bent out of shape about that, then go speak against it. Otherwise, we stupid. I think we might be stupid. Uh, how are we making music about killing ourselves? Who does that? You like black people? Wow, you pretty racist. <laughs> uh, now there's a lot of black people that that spit conscious rap. It's just that that stuff gets pushed to the back. We don't hear about the conscious stuff. The people that they pro there are people that promote good conscious stuff, thoughtful stuff, thought provoking stuff. And there are people that push horrible stuff and a certain group pours money into the horrible stuff for that to come out. But not the good stuff. Uh, listen, BG is on a reunion tour, man. Now, last time we reported uh, BG got arrested because it was said that he violated his uh, his parole. Right. By performing with Boosie, who was a convicted felon. Um, well, as far as I understand. So uh, BG has a strong message concerning um, the details of that. Take a listen to what he had to say. I ran into a heat up, you know, with my little situation. I'm going to get past it. I, I, I need y'all to know that I definitely ain't jump out there and did nothing. Then I ain't had permission to do it. was just a lapse in communication. You know what I'm saying? We got this tour coming up. This reunion tour is definitely on the way. You heard me? Fresh, sugar, slim. You know what I'm saying? Weezy, we just sent me the verse back. 
for the for the for the album. Don't pause the oh that joke. Don't pause. Hey. Every time he rap, he make me cry. Nah, that's a fact. Hey, hey, look. I told him I wanted the mixtape Weezy. You heard me? He gave me the mixtape Weezy. So, sound like he he said old look old. He got old mixtape Weezy, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I know a lot of folks are going to be excited to hear that. Listen, man, um, let, let me go to my shout outs real quick. I had, I had a few shout outs. Uh, hopefully we ain't going to be too long before you. Let me see. Here. I'm starting to get hot in the car. Um, all right, li listen, man, shout out to, uh, DJ Cheddar. My man said, yo, Jesus is the greatest and highest value man that there will ever be. <laughs> Not long live King Von. Long live Jesus Christ. There you go. That's what I'm talking about right here, man. You know what I'm saying? Jesus challenged people and they did not like it. He made them think they did not like it. You know what I'm saying? He spoke truth and reality and folks are trying to avoid him like the plague. It's interesting. <laughs> uh, like the plague. Valencia Dooley said, um, at Celeb Source, they said, uh, we was talking about Layla Red, okay? He said, if any man is dealing with a woman, right? Because Layla Red said a real grown man pay for buns. Uh, Valencia said, if any man is dealing with a woman and made a conscious decision to take his hard earned money that he has made by the sweat of his brows and has ever purchased, bought or even given that same said woman anything at any point in time that benefited her in any way, whether she be whether she be a Netflix and chill, a hotty thotty, homie, lover, friend, boo thing, situation ship, sugar, baby, jump off, shooby booby, do something strange for a little piece of change, <laughs> girlfriend, wife, fiance, fiance, uh, even even a kept woman. And they've had relations with that woman? He just paid for sex. Uh, no, Valencia Dooley. That is 100% incorrect. Okay? Um, love tends to express itself through the act of giving. You, you follow what I'm saying, man? So, just because sex was um, uh, something that took place in a relationship does not mean that the money that came out of his pockets was for the payment of that. It wasn't like transaction. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like... You, I did all this and now you owe me sex. It's just, I really like this girl. I really, da, da, da. there are some people that do do that, but that's not all the situations. Maybe in your life, you have always did all those things so that you can get sex. So for you, it was a transaction, but for a lot of people, it is not a transaction. You follow what I'm saying? So it, I guess you might be right for some people. Uh, where we at? Oh, 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 Chris LaBelle. Chris LaBelle. Chris LaBelle said, as I said multiple times before, <laughs> she quoted herself. She said, I have seven sons and one daughter. My daughter is one of the 11 year olds, and I've always raised my sons to know that if a woman is trying to give you something too fast, she's trying to give you an unwanted gift. I said, okay, I like that one. You know what I'm saying? Lastly, uh, I am Nefertari. I am Nefertari said, well, maybe, maybe. Uh, he wanted to pay for it. Oh, Ka Kai Sinai is referring to. He said, maybe he wanted to pay for it. Who set the market value? The customer. So if men don't proposition the women, the buns would have no value. Most men pay for it. So are you saying that most men don't value themselves? If that's the case, then we're screwed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most, most, men, most men are weak and they do not value themselves. And I would say most men don't have high value. You follow what I'm saying, man? That's why broad is the way to hell. And those that are going to go to hell are thrown in hell, equivalent to trash. Okay? That's why hell was named after a trash heap. So those that wind up in hell will be tossed into it like trash. They have no value at that point. They're, they're, they, they serve no great good purpose. You know what I'm saying? In a grand scheme of things. That's why they go there. And broad is the way. So broad, the, the way is full of trash, apparently. Anyway, let me let me wrap this bad boy up. I got how many minutes I got? I got five minutes. I right, listen. Um uh uh I right, Rick Ross. Rick Ross is going in on Birdman. <laughs> he's going in on Birdman. Um and, and he's not letting up. See, that, these people forget when you when you when you're going against Rick Ross. Rick Ross went against 50 Cent. 50 Cent is troll extraordinaire. You, you follow what I'm saying? So Rick, apparently Rick Ross is, is troll extraordinaire himself. Take a look at what he said concerning Birdman's estate. That I think it was foreclosed on. Take a look. Hey, hey. That's what Birdman house was at right over there. Stunner. That's where your house was at right there. The little island over there. 
You see, that man's stupid right there. He said, look, he said, look at that little island over there. Look, you, you look over there. Look, look. And when you look, it's pitch black. <laughs> right? It's, 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 no lights are coming out. This pitch is still a house he foreclosed on. And then, and then, he posted this clip concerning Drake and his mansion. Take a listen. Drake is leaving the U.S. for good and selling the last property he owns here, which is right down this long driveway behind me in Los Angeles. It's the most expensive home on the market right now in the prestigious 90210 area code at $88 million. So why is Drake selling and leaving? I'm LA. Yeah, Ross is going in on these guys. I guess Ross wants to, like, destroy, like, to dust, to dust, okay? Um, uh, all right, listen, listen, let me give you this one real quick. What's my time looking like? 17? Goodness gracious. All right, Kasanat. Kai Sinat, we, post, we told you the story yesterday about Kai Sinat and Layla Red. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you got to go back and watch the story yesterday. But hopefully you understand, all right? Um, you know, Shorty tried to uh, revenge porn them type, you know what I'm saying, type, type situation. Kai Sinat has decided to come up with a grand scheme on how to punish Layla Red. Take a listen real quick. So, Layla, I have bought your domain. Now, you might ask, what does that mean, Kai? It means... Every time somebody types in Kiara Rush, anytime somebody types in Layla Red, the first website that they will click on is all the lies you've told me, all the crimes you've done, all the dumb shit you just put yourself in to fuck up your life. So no, your OF link won't pop up first. No, 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 no. No, Pornhub or anything like that won't pop up for us. Oh, no, 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 no. The top link will be Keanu Rush, okay? Showing everything that you've done, okay? And you made a mistake fucking with me. Now, I know you don't understand the streaming world, and I know, I know you don't understand what's about to happen, but you wanted your attention. Keanu Rush that. We got you. <laughs> Head on. Wait, 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 wait. Here is the KiaraRush.com website. Kiara Rush exposed as a liar. Look, every single. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Hold on. What else, though? Every single clip for anybody who messes up. Oh, wait. I don't know Kiara's real name. Hold on. We don't know it. Oh no! <gasps> Here it is. Kiara Rush is supposed to be a liar once again. Thank you, Ryan. No matter what, for the rest of your life, this will be hair. You should have bought it. Clever, clever. Buying the domains. Okay, okay. He, and he can do that. He can do that. That's pretty clever, man. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed that he can do that. Um, well, not that he can do that. I'm impressed that he did that. Cause I, I wouldn't have thought it to do something like that. But you know what I'm saying? But I mean, this lady's trying to, you know, what I mean, say he's a John. <laughs> I mean, uh, and, and I mean, like what she, what she did was just disgusting on so many levels. She, she, she admitted to being a prostitute. Admitted to uh, supposed to be getting payment for sexual, uh, sexual pleasures. Um, uh, and then she, she tried to shame him. You know what I mean? Um, in no way is that woman attractive. <laughs> you like, you like. Do you think she's feminine? Come on, right? Uh, she, she was not attractive in what she did. I'll show you what a real attractive woman is. Sauce, can you play the clip of a real attractive woman? He is, you know, and and he he has the best intentions for you. His yeah. plans are to prosper you. Yeah, bring you to an expected end, but your life does not. Oh my God. Oh. My God. Bruh. We gonna keep this? <laughs> Nigga. I can't even reach you, bro. This is, <laughs> this is beyond embarrassing. Wait a minute. <laughs> bro. Life be like, wait a minute. Uh, 
that was great. That was great. It really made me smile. And I, it made you smile. So since you smiled, you might as well go on and hit us with a like and let us know that you appreciate the fact that we made you smile. You follow what I'm saying? Because I know you smiled off of that clip. There's no way you did. If you didn't smile, you're not human. You're not even a person. Okay? Uh, and finally, good old Diddy, your favorite artist. Listen, man. I don't know if you remember right. But there was an artist by the name of Kesha who used to sing a song. I forgot the name of the song. I think it's like Don't Stop. I don't know what it's called. But she used to say, wake up in the morning feeling like Pete Zitty. Right? <laughs> look, look, look. Um, she has changed the lyrics to that song. And I want you to take a listen real quick. Wake up in the morning feeling like Pete Diddy. Hey, whatever, Grab my glasses, I'm out the door. I'm gonna hit this city Let's before go. I... Now, one person was in the comments like, she was weird for waking up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy to, to begin with. <laughs> I was like, okay. Uh, now, a lot of folks are saying, man, Kesha out here just trying to ride the wave. You know what I mean? The Diddy, the hate Diddy train, okay? Um, but I've been heard Kesha mention Diddy like behavior from a music producer that she would, that she had dealings with. You know what I'm saying? She, she once said that when she was trying to get in the, in the game, right? It was a music producer that violated her in the way that Diddy is being accused of violating all the people that he's interacted with. So her saying that is not her trying to grab a surfboard. A lot of people have been violated by an astounding number of producers and gatekeepers and artists. And it's absolutely disgusting. You know what I mean? And not everyone is bold enough to speak about how they were dehumanized. Only a few people would do that. Okay. And I mean, it, it's huge to be bold enough to even do that because a lot of folks wouldn't. And this is not to say... <laughs> that those that don't want to talk about it aren't bold. You know what I mean? It's not that they're cowards in any way. Some people just don't like to speak on their pains or, or their hurt. In fact, these stories might actually open up closed wounds for a lot of people that have been violated. And they don't even and, and look, you don't even got to be a celebrity to be in that position. You know, there are countless women that are constantly violated or made to feel like they have to do strange things for their superiors. And it's tragic that that's the kind of world that we live in, man. You know what I'm saying? People feel coerced and dehumanized all the time yeah you, you follow what i'm saying man um and some people are like oh oh you know what i mean like just trying to take a black man down this is not a race issue man this is an abuse issue and last i checked white and black people both get abused imagine your child absolutely loving music and wanting to get into that field and a predator who happens to be a gatekeeper only allows your child into the field that they love if they'll trade out their own dignity and self-worth and value to get in that position it's got nothing to do with race at that point. You follow what I'm saying? Exploitation and predatory behavior <laughs> should be punished at every level of society, period. Um, we're seeing it in the music industry, but in actuality, it happens in all areas of life where there are supervisors and subordinates. Um, and finally, finally, listen, man. Artist G Depp was released from prison. Now, last I understand, he's a he's a de he's a bad boy. He was a bad boy artist. I think he got arrested back in uh, 2001. The man wrote 400 songs when he was locked up. Now, now he talk, he just got out two weeks ago. Talk about he want to link up with Diddy. Take a listen. You're telling me you got just under 400 songs that you wrote when you were inside, okay. and you got a message for for Puff Daddy right now. Facts. I'm saying, you know, got a lot of songs, bro. You know what I'm saying? Looking for you, you know, so we can get, you know, some type of musical situation going, you know, it is what it is, man. We need to get this thing going, man. So, you know, I'll let your boy, man, find, you know, let me know some type of way to, con you know, to contact you. I mean, you know, you go through these joints, man, see what we're working with, man. It's, 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 it's there. And are you concerned, though, about he's got a lot on his mind with these legal issues in these cases right now? Does that worry you at all? Yeah, I know. I know he probably does. You know, have a, you know a lot of a lot of issues. You know, a lot of things he's dealing with. Hold your head out there. You know what I mean? You know, and um, you know, you know. Hopefully, you know, if he still does music, I know, you know, somewhere down the line, you know, maybe he'll, you know, have time for that. You know what I'm saying? All I need is a studio. You know what I mean? I mean, we could go over the. By the time I'm done, he'll probably be, you know, have everything situated. You know what I'm saying? You know, little 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 studios and. You know, however the distribution is going, you know what I mean? And we, and we get, you know what I mean? We back in business. You know what I'm saying? Gonna tell who, look, who gonna break the news, old boy? Look, look. <laughs> bro didn't hear the question. They said, are you concerned about the legal issues that the diddler is facing, bro? Bro, bro, bro my man was like, uh, I know he got a lot on his plate. This tells me 
He ain't been on the gram. He ain't been watching the news. Ain't nobody said nothing. Don't nobody love this man. <laughs> I mean, I mean, come on, bro. Like you supposed to be, you know what I'm saying? Um, and, and here's the crazy thing. He turned himself in for a murder. That's what he, he did time, you know, for a murder. Turned himself in, talking about he was just trying to get things right between himself and God. He got away with it through the through the through the pistol in the um in the river. He got away with it. But he felt some type of way and felt like he needed to make things right with God. So he decided to confess. Here's the thing, man. Um, here's the thing, man. You, bro, <laughs> uh, the, the, it ain't what it was. The situation ain't what it was. Not by a long shot, man. This ain't the way, my G. Real talk. This ain't. The, things have changed, bro. You know what I mean? You don't want nothing to do with the diddler. You follow what I'm saying, man? And look, a good check of the temperature will let you know. It's too hot out there for all that. <laughs> You'll let us know your thoughts in the comments below, man. Be sure to like. Be sure to subscribe. Thanks for tuning in to Celeb Source, your source of celeb news.